Welcome to today's episode of Places, People, Purpose. We're moving to a new place today, which is the city of Prague in the Czech Republic. This city and country hold special significance for our family as our father's parents emigrated from Czechoslovakia. So we have Czech heritage and we're very excited to share some of our ancestry and the beautiful place of Prague and the Czech Republic with you. With that bit of background, let's get started on today's episode. Around the fourth century BCE, the present day Czech Republic was populated by Celtic tribes. Specifically, the first ethnic group to arrive in the area was the Celtic Bowie tribe, giving the country its Latin name, which means Bohemia. However, it is thought that the Celtic tribes were later displaced by German tribes. At the end of the 5th and the beginning of the 6th century, large populations of Slavs began arriving and settling in Central Europe along the Vltava River. The 9th century saw the emergence of the Great Moravian Empire, which included parts of what is now the Czech Republic as well as current-day Moravia, Slovakia, Poland, and Hungary. The Great Moravian Empire significantly influenced the development of culture and religion among the Eastern and Southern Slavs, and this period also marked the spread of Christianity in the region. In the 10th century, the Premislid dynasty established the Kingdom of Bohemia, with Prague as its capital. The reign of Charles IV from 1346 to 1378 was a golden age for Prague. Charles transformed the city into a cultural and economic hub, overseeing the construction of the famous Charles Bridge and Prague Castle. His namesake, Charles University, was also established as the first university in Central Europe. Charles IV was crowned the Roman Emperor in Rome in 1355. The 15th century was marked by the Hussite Revolution from 1419 to 1436. The Hussite Wars were caused, at least in part, by the economic and political crisis that occurred during the reign of Wenceslas IV who was the successor of Charles IV. The Hussite movement was inspired by the ideas of Jan Hus, a Czech pastor who ultimately was burnt at the stake in 1415. Despite his death, his supporters successfully continued in their efforts to achieve religious reform. The Hussites assumed control of Prague after the death of the Holy Roman Emperor Wenceslas IV in 1419. The Hussite movement did lead to many changes and created religious dualism for the first time in Christian Europe. The weakening of the Bohemian Kingdom due to the religious wars left both Bohemia and Moravia vulnerable to foreign intervention. As a result, the Habsburg dynasty gained control of Bohemia in the 16th century, and the region became part of the Habsburg monarchy. The Habsburg rule brought the reintroduction of the Roman Catholic faith, centralization, and the construction of a multinational empire. After the disintegration of the Habsburg monarchy, the historic Czech lands were united with parts of the Hungarian kingdom to form Czechoslovakia as one of the states of the post-Austro-Hungarian Empire. In 1918, at the end of World War I, 
Czechoslovakia declared its independence, with Prague as its capital. Tomáš Masaryk, who was a writer and philosopher, became the country's first president. The interwar period saw political stability and economic growth, but the country was occupied by Nazi Germany during World War II. At a conference in Munich in 1938, Hitler demanded that Germany be allowed to annex the Sudetenland, which was a border area with Czechoslovakia. British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain did not dissent, and by March 15, 1939, Germany occupied all of Bohemia and Moravia. Slovakia was allowed to remain independent in name only, so long as it did what Germany wanted it to do. With the war ended, Czechoslovakia was reconstituted as an independent state. After World War II, the restored republic became part of the Soviet sphere of power. A period of limited democracy was ended by a communist takeover in February of 1948. In the 1960s, Czechoslovakia enjoyed a period of political liberalization under the leadership of reform communist Alexander Dubček. The movement espoused a mixture of communist and democratic principles. This easing of hardline communism was known as the Prague Spring, but ultimately, the success of the movement became a cause for concern by the Russians. Ultimately, there was an invasion by Soviet-led forces on August 20th and 21st in 1968, which led to many deaths and the demise of Dubček as leader. The fall of communism in Czechoslovakia came with the Velvet Revolution, which was a series of peaceful protests and demonstrations that began in November of 1989. The backdrop for this historic event was a nation oppressed by decades of communist rule imposed by the Soviet Union. Czechoslovakia, under the tight grip of the Communist Party, had been subjected to censorship, human rights abuses, and a stagnant economy. The spark that ignited the Velvet Revolution was the police crackdown on a peaceful student protest in Prague on November 17, 1989. The brutal suppression of the students' demands for political reform and civil liberties shocked the nation and galvanized a diverse coalition of dissidents, intellectuals, students, and ordinary citizens. This marked the beginning of a series of protests that would ultimately bring down the communist regime. One of the most iconic figures of the Velvet Revolution was Václav Havel, a renowned playwright and dissident. Havel's eloquent essays and speeches were a rallying cry for the dissident movement. His role as a moral authority and advocate for nonviolence was instrumental in maintaining the peaceful nature of the revolution. In the weeks that followed, massive protests and public demonstrations became a daily occurrence. Citizens filled the streets, demanding an end to communist rule and the establishment of democracy. Rather than resorting to violence, the leaders of the Velvet Revolution engaged in negotiations with the Communist Party. The Roundtable Talks, a series of discussions between the government and opposition representatives, were held in December of 1989. These talks led to the eventual resignation of the Communist Party's top leadership. December 10, 1989, marked a historic turning point when Václav Havel was elected president by the Federal Assembly of Czechoslovakia. Havel's presidency symbolized the triumph of democracy and the end of authoritarian rule. 
What makes the Velvet Revolution truly unique is that it achieved a peaceful transition of power without the violence and chaos that often accompanies revolutions. The courage and determination of the Czech people, combined with a commitment to nonviolence, led to a remarkable transformation. The Velvet Revolution's legacy endures as a shining example of peaceful resistance and the power of the human spirit. It inspired similar movements across Eastern Europe, leading to the fall of the Berlin Wall and the dissolution of the Eastern Bloc. Somewhat ironically, the Velvet Revolution also may have played a role in the ultimate separation of the country, as the new political freedoms also allowed for the reemergence of historic tensions between the Czechs and the Slovaks. The 1992 federal elections served as a pivotal moment. The Czechs and Slovaks elected separate political parties with differing visions for the nation's future. While the Czechs supported a more centralized and economically liberal state, the Slovaks favored greater autonomy and a slower transition to market capitalism. This divergence in political ideology heightened the prospects of a split. Rather than allowing political tensions to escalate into conflict, Czech and Slovak leaders opted for negotiation and diplomacy. The breakup of Czechoslovakia was peaceful, earning it the moniker of the Velvet Divorce. Key figures like Czech Prime Minister Václav Klaus and Slovak Prime Minister Vladimir Mečiar played instrumental roles in crafting the separation agreement. On January 1, 1993, the division of Czechoslovakia into the Czech Republic and Slovakia became official. This peaceful separation allowed both nations to embark on independent paths while maintaining strong cultural and historical ties. The division was accompanied by a commitment to respect each other's sovereignty, an essential element for ensuring peace and stability in the region. The division brought about distinct changes for both nations. The Czech Republic and Slovakia each pursued their unique political, economic, and social paths. The Czech Republic rapidly integrated into Western institutions, including the European Union and NATO, while Slovakia took a slightly different trajectory. Despite the separation, the two nations have maintained a cooperative relationship. They share open borders, cultural exchanges, and a mutual respect for their shared history. The Velvet Divorce is a testament to the ability of nations to peacefully disentangle their political and economic ties when necessary, while preserving amicable relations. That's all we have for today. We hope you enjoyed learning about the history of Czechoslovakia. Tomorrow, we are going to explore Prague and the Czech Republic in more detail. So please join our next episode of Places, People, Purpose, where we create connections to our world.